let's just dive right in. You are the director of the State of Texas versus Melissa, which was selected for a Tribeca Film Festival and went on to receive several accolades, several awards, including the Rain Dance's Best Documentary Award. Hulu recently bought the U.S. rights to the film, in which it just premiered on Hulu. As I mentioned, I watched it on April 15th, I believe. Yeah, that was Thursday. Yes, Thursday. Oh, Friday. Friday. And I, wa I think that's when I watched it on Friday. Um, for those unaware of this story, the documentary, The State of Texas versus Melissa, explores the story of Melissa Lucio, a woman from Texas, Harlingen, Texas. I'm also from Texas. So another reason why the story like got to me so um who was subsequently charged convicted and sentenced to death row in 2018 for the abuse and death of her two-year-old daughter mariah uh, melissa is the first hispanic woman to be on death row in texas sabrina again you're the director what was it about melissa's story that you said you had to be involved in this project you know um it was everything about Melissa's story. She checked all the dots, right, of the ideal culprit. Uh, and she checks all the reasons why, you know, people are on death row in the United States. Mm -hmm. uh, she is brown. You know, she could as well be black. Mm -hmm. uh, she is poor. She had a, a court-appointed attorney, uh, you know, who didn't do his job. Uh, and and then she uh, was in the midst of the re-election of a DA who uh, subsequently, you know, uh, was charged, uh, you know, for corruption and bribery and is now serving a 13 year prison sentence. So, I mean, just the entire thing just kept going on and on and on. And, you know, uh, you're just thinking this is just exactly the reason why. There are so many, uh, you know, flawed characters, people like her in American prisons. You know, yes. I mean, it's just, it, you know, the, 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 what I always say is it's not that the system is broken. Mm. It's a system was specifically designed to put people like Melissa, you know, in prison. Right. That's what it is. That's you know, I mean, and if people are asking themselves, I mean, I'm, I'm just going to say. Check it out for yourself. Mm. You're not going to find one person who has money on death row. Mm. What you will find are blacks, brown, right. poor, right. you know, mentally disabled, even though they're not supposed to go. It's against the law and they're not supposed to be on death row, but a lot of them are. Mm. And this is what you're going to find. So, you know, right now we, you, you did mention that, yes, I mean, the timing is just quite extraordinary because, you know, we're talking a lot about, you know, Black Lives Matter and police brutality, but what about, you know, um, the brutality mm. of our judicial system? system? Yes, definitely. And speaking of this documentary explores that, right? Because I believe that Melissa didn't get a fair trial, right? Like you said, her attorney didn't bring forth the key witnesses in her case. Like the whole thing was, uh, a miss to me. I was like baffled at like this woman is going to sit on death row due to the fact that she didn't have, you know, the right representation because she couldn't afford it. Right. I um, mean, a fair trial is an understatement. Mm, I mean, could it, miscarriage you know, of justice. Oh, uh, it's just a complete miscarriage of justice. I mean, she, she, she couldn't, you know, she didn't stood a chance for, yeah, she didn't stood a chance. What did you think when you first heard, how did you come to learn about Melissa's story? How, would, how, did, how did you find out about her story? I was assigned to do a documentary about women on death row mm. uh, for a French TV channel. Wow. Uh, and uh, I had decided to interview four different women and Melissa was one of them. Mm -hmm. uh, and, but there was very little about her uh, you know, in the media at all. Right. And um, she was basic. It was basically kind of like just another case of child abuse, you mm -hmm. know. And 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 you know, when you wrote, when you read, you know, what was written about her on the internet, it was basically okay. Hispanic women, uh, uh, you know, too many children uh, on drugs, 
And, you know, basically, you know, she, uh, you know, lashed out on her little one and killed her, basically. So you're just like, okay, you know, uh, you know, I've, I've known this story, right? I mean, I've, I've, I've heard the story before. But when I got there, when I got to Harlingen, which is uh, a border town right. in Texas, uh, right. you know, boarding, you know, Mexico, uh, I met her family and uh, they said to me, you're the first person in 13 years to come to us and ask us any questions, period. Wow. And I said to them, well, what about her lawyer? And they said, oh, he never asked us any questions. He never wanted to meet with us. Uh, you know, a lot of the children, you, you know, they stated that, you know, they saw Mariah fall down a flight of stairs. And, you know, we all know it was an accident and we all know. And, you know, would you like to see the stairs? So they drove me to the stairs and, you know, I saw those stairs who were just, you know, scary and crazy. And, you know, how could CPS, you know, ever, you know, allow a family of, you know, 12 kids, mm -hmm. you know, to, to actually live in such a dump you right. know, with those scary, scary, scary stairs. So, you know, and then they went on and they're like, yeah, you know, the lawyer, he went to work for the DA and the, you know, it, it's very corrupted here. And the DA, you know, is now in prison for bribery, extortion. I mean, it just went on and on. And I was just like, this is just, I, I can't even believe it. And then the next day mm -hmm. I met Melissa. Wow. I actually drove to uh, Gatesville, Texas, which is like eight hours away from Harlingen. And that's wow. one of the main reasons why her family, you know, uh, never visits her, you know. Okay. Uh, and I was the very first, first reporter she had ever met. I mean, she had never been interviewed in her life. That's and so baffling to me. I know. I know. It's just un unbelievable that, you know, for, for like, you know, 12 years, I mean, she had been on death row 11 years already. And, and you know, I'm like the very first person inquiring, right. you know, uh, and from the, just the very first time I saw her, just the very, you know, first minute, I mean, I was just like, this is, this, I, this can't be. Right. I don't believe this, you know, right. and it just, just every, the way she answered and she was so like, in a way at peace, we were, you know, that, that basically she was going to die and that, you know, she is, you know, there's, there's a sense about Melissa that she specifically knows she has no voice mm. and her, her life doesn't count. Wow. And that, you know, that's it. You know, it's just pure injustice. And, you know, from the moment she was born, she, you know, was subject to, you know, abuse and, you know, and, and, and that's it. And she's just going to die. And, you know, you know, you know that, that's, that's the sense I got from her, right. you know, that she was doomed in mm -hmm. a way, mm -hmm. you know, and, and when I met her, she had never seen any of her children again. Wow. Yeah. In 11 years. And it's so interesting. I have so many questions. First of all, when you talk to the children and you read the articles online on the internet, you gauge your opinion, you kind of know like, okay, this is what this is about. When you speak to the children and they tell you, you know, nobody had ever interviewed them and you get this new information. What did you learn from the children? Because that's who didn't have a voice in her case, I feel like, because they loved their mom. Due to the watching the documentary, you can see the love and the hurt, you know, from losing their mom, despite the circumstances they were living in, right? It's like they didn't care about that. Their loss and their hurt was from losing their mom. Um, and of course, their sister. But can you talk to us a little bit about when you interviewed those children for the first time? What did you learn about Melissa from the children? Okay, so so interviewing the children was a very, I mean, everything was hard in this documentary, don't get me wrong, just right. getting anybody to speak. Because, you know, when you have someone on death row, it's like an atomic bomb in a family. Okay? Right. Right. Uh, I, I, I mean, the collateral damage is beyond anything you can imagine. And those children had been separated Mm -hmm. And we're all over, you know, the state of Texas. And, you know, uh, her eldest son, John, 
uh, you know, when he found out that his mother had been convicted to death row, he tried to commit suicide and, you know, just basically, you know, run in front of a car. She had another son who tried to hang himself. Uh, mm. I mean, you know, I mean, it's just, it's just severe. Okay. So um, her eldest daughter, Daniela, was someone that I really wanted, I really wanted to speak to her because she was the one taking care of the children. Mm. Uh, you know, and it, she's, it was a typical, you know, Mexican family where, you know, the eldest take care of the youngest ones. There are so many children. Right. And she had been so, I mean, it was hard to get in touch with her. I mean, you know, it basically took me like a good six months to, you know, you know, for her to trust me. And, and, you know, I, I, I asked her all these questions. I'm like, well, did you ever see, you mm -hmm. know, was your mom ever violent? You know, mm -hmm. I mean, of course, by that time, I had access to all the CPS records okay. where, you know, for over 10 years, they were monitoring that family. Mm -hmm. and there was just never any signs, never any, nothing about violence. I mean, yes, it, there was a lot of neglect, mm -hmm. you know, which, you know, when you're poor, I mean, you know, the uh, neglect is a very thin line. Right. There are too many children. They live in a dump. I mean, it's just, okay. Uh, and she just kept saying, you know, my mother, I mean, you know, she never disciplined us. My mother, you know, I mean, I was the one taking care of the kids all the time. I saw this, I saw that and nothing happened. Mm. Nothing. So then, you know, I, I went on and I went to San Antonio and met some, uh, some of their, the other children mm -hmm. who were in foster care. Mm -hmm. And that's when I met Bobby. Uh, I and, so much. Yeah. Bobby is just so amazing. And mm -hmm. Bobby was had always been very close to his mom uh and he he said you know I mean I I, I was there she was you know Mariah was, was with us all the time and you know we I never noticed anything right. you know but 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 we know that she fell we know that she fell and of course you can see it in the film there's those videos taken right. by you know mm -hmm. Those are Megan Law interviews, basically, which, you know, they're taken by, um, you know, um, uh, CPS people and, 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 and the police, you know, um, and the, the children state that right. they saw their little sister fall down the stairs. Yet, you know, the lawyer in her case decided to completely dismiss that right. and not have any of those children come to the stand. So... In the film, you don't see a lot of the kids because I just couldn't interview, you know, just everybody. Right. I mean, even though I did, I, I just couldn't edit it. Right. Um, but, you know, I mean, what you see is, is, is what I got that basically, you know, uh, there was never enough, you know, there was just no nothing that the children had seen, mm -hmm. you know, that could have, you know, explained, right. you know, the bruising or anything. Right. So, you know, all of a sudden, you know, you get, you get this case and you're thinking, wow, there's a woman on death row. There's not one person, one, who has ever witnessed her being abused. abused it, right, right. There's been no investigation. You know, they just assume she's the one. You know, then, of course, you know, you get, you know, uh, a forensic expert at trial who says, it's the worst case of child abuse she's ever seen. But at the same time, I interviewed another forensic expert who told who tells me exactly the opposite. Who tells me, you know, she has all the sign of an accident. Right. The bruising on her body is actually a result of the blunt head trauma that she suffered. So just just this entire case is is just a disaster. It is. It is. I want to ask you a little bit um, before we move on. With the kids, you know, in the documentary, it's revealed or it's come up, it comes up from the family about this relationship with one of the daughters and Mariah and that she could have been the one who possibly did it. And the mom is sitting on death row due to, you know, in protecting her child and not wanting to say anything. Multiple kids stated that she, uh, this daughter, um, one of the oldest daughters, didn't connect with Mariah and had like a little bit of a you know, tip there. Where do we she stand? She was fed up. She was right. fed up of taking care of the kids. I mean, where she was a teenager. And where, what, what is that theory today? Where, where do we stand with that? Is there anything that's come of that since the documentary come, has come out? Well, 
uh, yeah, in terms of, you know, the family is really like kind of fighting right now. Wow. Um, uh, if there was someone mm -hmm. abusive in that family, it was definitely Alex. And, right. uh, and she actually told that to the original private investigator. Uh, you know, she, she said that. And again, the lawyer decided, you know, not to mention that, right. you know, to just put that aside, which could have completely changed everything for Melissa. I mean, all of a sudden, that's it. You know, there's no more death row, uh, no more nothing. Okay? Right. But um, he decided, and that was very strange, to uh, not mention that information that he knew and that multiple children had told him mm. that, you know, uh, one of the, the teenage daughters, mm -hmm. Alexandra, was actually being abusive. Um, so now, I mean, she says, oh, well, I was actually abusive to everybody or, you know, I, I was the mean one. Uh, I was fed up. And it's hard, you know, because for 12 years, a lot of these kids have basically, I wouldn't say given up on their mom, but in a way, yes. When mm -hmm. you have someone on death row, you do. Right. You know, there's no hope. Right. And Alex is still their sister, you know. So the conflict is there. Uh, but no, I mean, there is not going to be anything. If you're asking me in terms of uh, an investigation, mm -hmm. oh, no, nothing. I mean, you know, uh, that's it. You know, Melissa is, I mean, they couldn't bring any new elements to the case. Uh, and she lost her last appeal at the Fifth Circuit. Right. Now it's up to the U.S. Supreme Court. Yes. And Absolutely. if they do decide to hear it, then yes, it could come up. But, you know, the fact that, you know, uh, Alex would, you know, uh, ever, you know, be interrogated or, you know, um, charged. Right. Is, you know, is non-existent. It's not going to happen. Right. And speaking of um, some hope, right, for Melissa, like you stated, the U.S. Supreme Court is her last hope at, you know, some getting a new trial or some justice for her. Um, do you hope that this documentary will, I mean, because it's already been catching a lot of buzz. People are talking about this documentary. You're going on the Innocent Projects, Jason Plums, I believe. You're going on his podcast soon. It's garnering a lot of nationwide attention because I had no idea about this story, right? Um, and like you said, she hadn't been interviewed. And I believe there are a lot more Melissa's, right? They may not be on death row, but they're, you know, likely to. There are you know, so many so Melissa's more. out there. So many more. Sabrina, is it your hope that this documentary will help shed light on Melissa's story and get her some justice and also be able to help those other Melissa's out there? That's I've been praying for that. Mm -hmm. That's been the reason why, you know, for three years, I've been like a mad woman doing this film and, and just, you know, uh, investigating this case and, and trying to make as, you know, as much noise as I could. Right. Uh, and, and now all of a sudden, you know, it's actually getting out there. And, you know, my biggest hope is, is for this story not to be mine anymore. Mm. Y yours. Right. You guys, everybody, you know, right. like all of a sudden that, you know, people will advocate and will say her name yes. and, you know, and, and, and so, and realize that, you know, there are so many more like her mm -hmm. and that the system is so unjust and death row is so inhumane. Right. I mean, when you have so many people in prison, just to start, let's not even talk about, you know, death row. Right. You basically had to agree to a plea deal because otherwise they would have gotten life right 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 exactly that happens all the time mm -hmm. and and the stats i mean you know speak for themselves i mean if you go to trial in the u.s 95 percent of all cases are won by the da's office right you don't stand a chance so uh yes I mean, my hope right now is that people will watch the film. Mm -hmm. It will create a lot of buzz. Um, I am hoping that the, the Supreme Court will hear her case because two years ago, uh, four judges unanimously reversed her case. And what? in February, all of us, a very, very divided court reversed it again. 
and we're talking the most conservative, you know, conservative court in the U.S., the right. Fifth Circuit, you know, like like in Texas. Um, so yes, I am really uh, hopeful for that, and I'm hopeful that people will not allow her to be executed. Right. Right. <sighs> so good. Um, I want to first ask you, Sabrina. Well, not first, but I also want to ask you, um, with Melissa's case and being that Texas has this storied reputation of executions, right? What can we do, right? What can people like myself and viewers that are going to watch this that have not watched it, after they watch this documentary, what can they do to help Melissa in getting some justice? Is there anybody that we can write to? Is it, what Do you know options that we have in raising our voice, raising awareness for her as well? Like you said, you don't want it to just be your story. You want it to be ours as exactly. well, the poor story. What can people do um, to help Melissa? Well, there's a petition online. Mm -hmm. So, you know, we need to have a lot of, num I mean, big numbers, you know? Right. <laughs> So that's, you know, you can find that uh, um, you can, there's been people in the last, you know, 48 hours reached out to me so many, you know, what can we do? So there's a GoFundMe going on. Wow. Uh, we're trying to get, you know, Melissa, you know, uh, uh, maybe, you know, like, like, you know, new lawyers or, 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 you know, maybe we're just, it's just all in the thinking right now, but you're going to see that coming up soon. Wow. There's an hashtag, save Melissa Lucio, free oh, Melissa wow. Lucio. Just like, you know, basically like what I was saying, say her name. Her name wow. needs to be known. Yes. yes, definitely. Her name needs to be known like like Julius Jones mm -hmm. is known, like Rodney Reed is known. Those guys would have been executed a long time ago if it wasn't for, you know, the, the people, for the public. Oh, right? yeah. Yeah. That's what's saving their lives right now. Is oh, that yeah. People are watching out saying, no, we're not right. going to let you do this. Okay? okay. You're not going to kill these people. There are mm -hmm. so many people being killed right now. So um, sign the petition, go on social media, uh, you know, follow soon. There's going to, to be a GoFundMe. You can also uh, write to Melissa. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, she's in Mountain View unit in Texas. You know, you, it's very easy to find the address. You can also, you know, uh, there is an app called JPay where you can you can send her, you know, a message. I mean, she needs all the hope in the world. She's been, you know, in solitary confinement. Wow. Yes, in the last fourteen years, people need to realize what that means. I mean, uh, when you are on death row, you are never allowed any human contact ever. So she has been in solitary confinement. Uh, she is allowed to uh, go outside twice a week alone for one hour wow uh she does have friends you mm -hmm. know um uh, i think she has you know like like but but she talks to them through the walls you know there's no human contact she hasn't had a lunch or dinner or you know shared anything or touched someone in 14 years so all the the letters that you guys can send mm -hmm. you know i mean that's just it, it would mean the world to her, especially for someone who hasn't been loved a lot in her life. Right, right. Sabrina, when is the last time, have you spoken to Melissa since the documentary came out on Hulu? Have, and what are her thoughts if you have spoken to her? Uh, no, you cannot speak to her, okay. unfortunately. She's wow. on death row again. Wow. Uh, but uh, I wrote Mm -hmm. I wrote her <laughs> mm -hmm. and I have, so, so you can write to her on JPay, which is, uh, you know, it's overnight basically, mm -hmm. but you know, it takes her, a, you know, a few days, uh, you know, because she, you need to receive a letter. So now, I mean, by now it's, I probably have like, ex have exchanged like 300 letters with her, you know, <laughs> uh, but <laughs> not only is she's going to find out it's on Hulu because, you know, there are so many people who have, you know, written to her yeah. in the last 48 hours. You, you, I mean, just, just, you know, people are amazing. Wow. I mean, people are amazing, you know. I mean, right now, I mean, you know, like I, I was telling you, there's this GoFundMe going on. There's all these people wanting to help. What can we do? And they're all like writing to her through everywhere in the U.S. Right. So uh, she's going to be like... Uh, very, very happily surprised. Wow. I, 
I know you must feel some sense of joy or in not even just joy, but some sense of uh, you're on the right side of justice, right? In trying to help this woman in any way you can possible, right? Um, so you started, you're, you're the director of this project, but how are you feeling now today after, you know, hearing from everybody? Are you feeling like, wow, I had no idea going in that this would be the outcome, but look where we are. What are your, how, how, how do you feel? It's, I feel, I mean, I feel relieved, first mm -hmm. of all, that mm -hmm. this story is finally out right. uh, to, you know, a lot of people. But at the same time, she ch completely changed my life, mm -hmm. you know? I mean, I feel, uh, and it's going to be weird to tell you that, but that the universe has want, wanted me to, you know, to be the messenger right. uh, in a lot of ways. Uh, just the way I met her how, you know, uh, I decided to create my production company. I produced this film, you know, right. how I find the funds. I mean, just everything, how, you know, people spoke to me, uh, you know, in the film and how, you know, the film was just, just has been having this just amazing career so far uh, and was finally picked up by Hulu. I feel that, you know, it's, yes, I feel I'm on the right side. Mm -hmm. I feel this is the time. The timing was also quite incredible right uh you know the fact that she's a woman the fact that you know uh she is hispanic and she is you know was a victim of sexual abuse mm -hmm. and now a victim of the courts right uh right now in america i feel that this is so important in so many ways and uh you know i feel incredibly useful definitely you said that you were inspired by ava's um when they see us Oh, yes, I was. So that, can you speak to that? You know, I mean, not only when they see us, but the 13th. I mean, you know, like her previous documentary. I feel, you know, when art, you know, um, allows you mm -hmm. to, uh, you know, shed a light mm -hmm. and, and all of a sudden change society. I mean, I think that's just amazing and and Ava I mean has done so much you know I mean it's just it's really her work is is quite incredible uh if you think about it you know I mean the the, the uh those guys you know and when they see us I mean I I knew I knew about them but I knew very little mm. and now you know everybody knows about their story and and uh they went against the DA I mean it's also very important to um have these people accountable right yeah. all these da's who are basically only thinking about themselves and their careers and you know i mean this is really not okay and uh uh so yeah i, I mean i'm incredibly inspired by by ava and all the others who are who are doing you know who are putting their art you know uh you know to to actually create awareness and and to uh have people who don't have a voice have a voice well, Sabrina, you have done that in this documentary job well done to you. And I'm here to help in any way I can. I've interviewed people for Julius Jones as well. So that case is also a dear to my heart as well. Thank you for using your voice. Thank you for using your art to help people like Melissa. Um, I appreciate you. I know her family does. So thank you again for taking the time to talk to us about this documentary. Tell people where they can watch it. If they don't have Hulu, how can people still watch um, the state of Texas? Oh, it's, it's all over. You, they can watch it on uh, Amazon, on yes. iTunes, on you know Apple TV, on Microsoft. I mean, it's all over. Mm -hmm. I mean, you know, if you you guys want to watch it, you, you're going to be able to watch it. Yeah, definitely. And then watch it, and then try to enact some type of you know service or justice for Melissa. Absolutely. Absolutely. Thank you so much, Sabrina. I appreciate you. Thank you.